We're at Lesson 7.1D, Solving a Real-World Inequality Problem. Although elevations below sea level are represented by negative numbers, we often use absolute values to describe these elevations. So remember, an absolute value is a number's distance from zero. So the absolute value of negative 3 is 3 because it's 3 jumps from zero. And the absolute value of a positive 3 is 3 because it's 3 jumps from zero. Negative 5 feet relative to sea level might be described as 5 feet below sea level. The word below has taken the place of the negative sign. It's very important you remember when we multiply or divide an inequality with a negative number as an inverse operation to isolate the variable, we must reverse the inequality symbol for the inequality to remain true. So if we're multiplying or dividing by a negative number, reverse that symbol or it won't remain true. A fish descended more than 20 feet below sea level. As it descended from sea level, its change in elevation was negative 2 feet per second. For how many seconds did it descend? We begin by rewriting the question as a statement to put it in the form of an inequality. It's asking for how many seconds did it descend. We write, find the number of seconds that the fish descended below sea level. See, now it's a statement, not a question. Our important information is that the final elevation is greater than 20 feet below sea level. We can say the final elevation was less than negative 20 feet. And the rate of descent was negative 2 feet per second. Now we formulate a plan. Our plan is going to be to write and solve an inequality. We're going to use the rate of change in elevation multiplied by the time in seconds, and that's going to equal the final elevation. We're going to let t be our variable for time. We have negative 2, that's the feet per second that it's descending, multiplied by t for time is less than negative 20. That's the rate of change multiplied by the time is less than the final elevation. We divide both sides by the coefficient negative 2, which means we'll need to reverse the inequality symbol. We have divided by negative 2, divided by negative 2. Negative divided by a negative gives us a positive, and it's got the same numerator and denominator, so we have 1t. We don't have to write that 1. We've got our symbol reversed, and negative 20 divided by negative 2 is a positive 10. We know the fish descended for more than 10 seconds. We can justify and check our answer by substituting a value greater than 10 seconds into the original inequality. So before we do this, because I've got this question mark above the inequality symbol, I want you to remember that if we see a question mark above an inequality symbol or a question mark above an equal sign, it shows the statement still needs to be solved or proved, okay? So we had negative 2t is less than negative 20. Well, we can use 11 since 11 is greater than 10. We needed some number t that's greater than 10, so we can use 11. We do negative 2 times 11, which gives us a negative 22. Negative 22 is less than negative 20. Well, that's true. Negative 22 is further left of 0 than negative 20, so that's true. Now, this inequality, because it had time, it had a rate, it had distance, this inequality involves uniform rate. To calculate distance, rate, and time, we use the formula for uniform rate. It's d is equal to rt, as distance is equal to rate multiplied by time. We substitute known values into the formula and solve for the unknown variable. So let's say a horse ran an average of 8 miles per hour, that's the rate, for 2 hours, that's the time. What distance did it travel? So we have, we're looking for the distance, 
and we substitute in the 8 miles per hour for 2 hours, and the distance is 16 miles. We can rearrange the formula by dividing both sides by r. We have the same numerator and denominator, so that's a 1. That makes a 1t, so it eliminates this r. We end up with the distance divided by the rate is equal to the time. This will help us if we need to use the uniform rate formula to solve for time, for t. So the uniform rate formula can be rearranged using the multiplication and division property of equality. We had the distance is equal to the rate multiplied by the time. If we want to rearrange it to solve for time, we just divide both sides by rate. This is multiplication here, so we use division as our inverse operation. That is going to make this same numerator and denominator as a 1, like I said before, and we end up with distance divided by the rate is equal to the time. We can also rearrange to solve for the rate. We can divide both sides by t for time and get the distance divided by the time is equal to the rate. And that fish problem involved a uniform rate inequality. The fish problem told us the distance, it told us the rate, we just needed to find the time. The school chess club wants to buy new chess boards. Each board will cost $14. The chess club has enough savings to buy no more than $98. How many boards can the chess club buy? We rewrite it as a statement, find the number of boards the chess club can buy. We know our important information is that the final money spent must be less than or equal to $98 because that's all they have. Or we can say the final money spent is less than or equal to $98. Our plan is we're going to write and solve an inequality, and we're going to use the cost of the board, of one board, multiplied by the number of boards, and that will be less than or equal to $98. We're going to let B equal the number of boards. It's $14 for each chessboard, and it needs to be less than or equal to the $98 they have. Now, since this involves multiplication, because this is 14 times some number of boards, we can use the division property of inequality to divide both sides by the coefficient 14. Same numerator and denominator, we end up with 1B. On this side, we do 98 divided by 14, and we get 7. That means the chess club can buy seven chess boards. Now, because this is the cost of a chess board and this is money spent, we also could have written these as a negative 14 and a negative 98, then divided both sides by a negative 14. Then we would have had to have switched this sign around because we would have been dividing by a negative, right? but we were also able to solve it by not using those negative signs. Now, here's a question. What if the club had $105 to spend? We would do the same thing. 14 times some unknown number of chess boards is less than or equal to 105. So that means we're going to divide both sides by 14 and get 1B on this side again. But when we divide 105 by 14, we get 7 and 5 tenths they can still only buy seven chessboards because they can't buy five-tenths of a chessboard. if buy a whole chessboard. So the answer would still be seven. They'd have a little money left over, wouldn't they? Now we can justify and check if seven chessboards is correct by sev substituting seven for b, our variable, in the original inequality. We had 14b was less than or equal to 98. We put 7 in place of b, and 14 times 7 is 98. And yes, 98 is equal to 98, so 98 is less than or equal to 98. That's true. We're finished with Lesson 7.1. We're moving on to 7.2, where we're going to be writing two-step inequalities. First, we're going to model the two-step inequalities to fully understand them. A lot of people mistakenly call this d equals rt formula 
they mistakenly call it the distance formula, and that's not the distance formula. Try to remember that it's called uniform rate. The distance formula is completely different, and we're going to get into that as you get deeper into algebra. So remember, that's uniform rate. Our next lesson is going to be coming up. I hope you join me, and I hope you have a really great day. Bye.